One of the most interesting parts of learning a language for me is seeing how the same general thought can be expressed so differently in various languages. In this video, let's talk about a construction that's really common in Russian. You can use it to express necessity, permission, whether something is uh, interesting or easy or hard for someone, how someone is feeling, and the list goes on. Now, for English speakers, the odd thing about these sentences in Russian is that they often have no subject. Now, you'll recall that subjects in Russian are in the nominative case. But since these are subject-less constructions, you don't see anything in the nominative in these examples. Instead, we'll use the dative case if you want to specify who needs to do something or who may or may not do something or who feels a certain way. You'll see that the Russian and English structures are very different. In English, I am the subject and there's a verb need. In Russian, we have mnya, that's the dative case of ya, and nada, a form that never changes. And note how we're using the infinitive rabotets. We're not conjugating the verb since there's no grammatical subject for it to agree with anyway. So literally, we're saying to me, necessary, to work. And there's also a very common synonym for nada, нужно. It's used in just the same way. Мне нужно работать. The form of nada never changes, and the same is true for нужно when you use it with a verb, no matter who it is who needs to do something. Тебе нужно работать. Нам нужно работать. Нашим родителям нужно работать. Let's look at some other common subjectless expressions. Мне трудно говорить по-русски. Нам сейчас очень трудно. Вам не интересно думать об этом? Вам плохо? Ему там очень хорошо. Соня очень скучно. You may need to paraphrase a little to express these in English, but look at how simple and straightforward the Russian construction is. All you need is a noun or pronoun in the dative and one of these unchanging adverbial forms. Expressions with можно are also really common. It can mean both possible and permitted. Можно говорить по-английски? Можно. Можно купить подарки в этом магазине? It's pretty common with можно to leave the noun or pronoun out if the context makes it clear, but you can also include it for clarity or emphasis. Ему можно, а вам нельзя. And here's another important expression. Нельзя can mean not permitted, and it's used to negate можно. Now, we never negate можно with the word не. Instead, to express that something's not permitted or is forbidden, just use нельзя. Subjectless expressions may sound a little stiff if you translate them literally into English, but they're really, really common in all levels, all styles of Russian, so you want to be sure to get comfortable with them and use them in your own conversations. But one cautionary note here. You may have seen this expression. Он должен работать. Она должна работать. Родители должны работать. Now the meanings of должен and нужно and nada are pretty close. Dolzhen can have the sense of some moral obligation or duty. In fact, dolzhen comes from the root dolk, which means duty. Uh, but nada and nushna might suggest outward forces that are compelling you, forcing you to do something. It's a little bit like the difference between ought to and have to in English. Even though the meanings are similar, there is a big difference in structure. These examples with dolzhen of course, not subjectless constructions. You see, we've got on, ana, radityli, in the nominative, they're the subjects of the sentences. Dolzhen is a short adjective here, and we do use it with a subject, unlike the adverbs that we've been discussing for most of this video. Short adjectives are a big topic that we'll cover in another video, but the point here is that when you encounter a new word like dolzhen or nuzhna, uh, be sure to learn it in a context so you know whether it goes with a subject, like dolzhen, or whether it's used in a subject-less expression, like nuzhna, nada, and the others. Summing up, subjectless constructions are very common in all levels of Russian. They're normally used with the dative case. 
The adverbial form like хорошо, трудно, or nada never changes form. And remember that since there's no subject, uh, you don't want to conjugate the verb, just use the infinitive.